Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Do It Yourself where I make an MMO because I can. Last time we uh, did this and the terrain is a bit different because I've added some testing terrain. Also, the camera does not follow the terrain because none of this is real, you're just moving the camera, it's not, you're not actually walking anywhere. So we can just sink through the floor and then we're there. I thought that would be funny. So I've created that test terrain because today is the terrain prettification um, episode. I don't know how long this is going to be. This may turn into two episodes. I don't know. But what we're going to do first is we're going to make... Because if you... Um, why don't we just keep the server up? It's just as easy. You can see that the, the tiles don't go all the way to the bottom, which is a problem. But also, if you look here, you can't really see the edge properly of where the tiles are and we can fix that so we get it and maybe then if we have time we'll add some grass which should be good so the first thing we need to do is we need to get a map.get tile function that returns which tile type you want to draw so let's just do that then shall we this is on the client because the server doesn't need to draw anything so public i renderable whoops renderable get tile and then we're gonna do like hmm well we're just gonna start with int x int y it's just it's just as easy no we can't do that so we have an integer x hmm yeah, let's just do double. Oh wait, then this needs to be double Y. Yeah, double Y. In Z. And there we go. So we have these tiles. And so these four are just for normal tiles, which is just for variations that can be anywhere when they're not on the edge. And we have these four where you can see they're kind of smudged in the middles so they seem a bit smoother those are the ones for the bottom edges of the cliffs so there's four of those then we have the top edges so that's only three and then we have one which i believe is used yeah this is for the corner bottom edge so we need some logic to dynamically return us the tile that we need Let's just keep that open right over there, shall we? Okay. So this is going to be a lot of if statements. And I'm basically going to type all of those out and then run you through them. So I implemented the get tile function. Observant viewers may notice that the to-do thing has changed because I was implementing get tiles earlier than I'd originally planned. I've also added add variation to tiles and I will momentarily show you why to the to-do list. So, um, let's see, can I do this always on top? No. Hmm. Just, just keep this like this for a little bit. So what it does, it gets the height of the tile that we want and then it says if the Y coordinate is equal to the height then we're on top. It also sets a variation which is always zero so it's like a because these tiles can be ver, ver, variety one uh, zero one two and three and then it's plus zero plus one plus two plus three and we're gonna add those later we're not gonna do that right now so first off we're gonna check if the X neighbor on the top side and the Z neighbor on the top side is closer than our current height. So if that is true and we're on top, we'll get this. Because you can clearly see there's a tile here which is lower on this side, which is lower than this tile, and there's a tile here which is lower than this tile. So you need to draw this edge. If it's not on top, then we just just want the normal variation. So that's one of these four tiles. 
Then the next one is if it's the top left border. So again, if, if the x minus one neighbor, so that's the one over here, if he's lower, then we want this edge. Unless we're on top, and then we want one of the four. Same with the next one, that's this one, this neighbor, this edge, and zero to four. Then the next one is um, these blocks. So this is when there's a when this is like the bottom corner and there's a lower tile on this side and on this side and that can be any of those four blocks which is useful except if we're on top um, this is if we're on top sorry if we're not on top we want to have this block because this one has an, a smooth edge here but it has a harder edge along these sides otherwise it'll look weird if you just stack those then finally, if we if we are on top and we're on a, one of the edges, so one of the straight edges like this or like this, we want one of those four blocks. And then if we're not on top, we just want one of these four blocks again. And that is basically all cases that we have tiles for. If you have a block that is only like one tile and it's like this, then it will just pick one of the upper edged ones, even though they're not completely... Oh wait, I did smooth them off at some point. Ha! Huh, I am a genius, apparently. So this should uh, hopefully work? I don't, I don't know. Let's see. Oh wait, I haven't... I haven't actually implemented it! Ha <laughs> ha! I've just made the function, but I haven't actually used it. So let's do that, shall we? Uh, what we want, so this is rendering, so we want to ask the map what tile we want for eggs. Hmm, what, why is that? Yeah, we're just gonna be... And this one, and then Z. This will only render the top one, so it's not gonna be perfect. Apparently he's not going to render anything. It's just going to blow up. What did we do? X minus one. Oh, okay. I see what's going on there. So we need to do an out of bounds check. If X is lower than zero or X is, or Y is lower than zero. Why are we doing x and y here? Let's fix that after we do this. x is greater or equal to width, or y is greater or equal to height. Thank you, Visual Studio. How very helpful. We just want to return, I don't know, minus one. So that should make this safe to index whatever where we want it. Oh my god. What I'm doing here is hitting control dot. I don't use a lot of shortcuts in Visual Studio, but this is one of the ones I do use. If you know any shortcuts I should be using, please tell me. So that is a rename function that will rename this variable and it updates it everywhere, which is like super convenient. Yeah, so now you can see the edges much more better, except they still don't draw all the way to the bottom, which is a bit of a problem, if you ask me. And, you know, you are asking me, so... So now we want to do step three, draw tiles all the way to the bottom. Let's go over here and take a look at that. So we have the, the Z and the X. We still need to have a Y. What I'm doing here is, it's another shortcut, it's typing forward and hitting tab twice. And that will insert a full loop. It's amazing. It's like magic. Um, hmm. That's not actually gonna work. Okay. okay, so we do want to have a for loop. We do want to have a Y. We do want to have a double. But we don't want necessarily the Y to start at that level. We want to use map X. Z, and then we want it to go until it's, um, while it's less than or 
equal to um, and we want to do this we want to round the number up I think so if it's at zero it will only draw one tile but if it's at 0 0.5 it will draw well we can actually round it down as well so let's do that I think that will work I'm not entirely sure and then we just move this in there and we do y minus 1 and then we get tile y this is a little bit janky I need to fix this off screen at some point because this is gonna that minus 1 is gonna get very confusing very quickly let's see if that works yeah that, that mostly works yeah yeah I think that'll work so so now we have way better terrain. Oh my god. It's like it's like a thing. Um then the next part is going to be to add variation to tiles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically pre-generate a 3D um cube full of numbers. So it's just like a 3D matrix or table and every um, cell in that 3D table is going to have a random value in it and then I'm going to use those to create variations and I'm going to do that because if I use a random number generator for every tile I draw that's not going to be good. Okay so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to take you back. Ah we're back! So I did this thing, I did a thing, oh my god I did a thing. I made a class. It's called variation because it gives you the tile variation or any variation really. It takes a random number generator and it has a width, a height and a depth. And it has a bunch of random numbers in a 3D cube, 3D table. And then this just sets stuff into the table. It's going to be a value between 0 and 255 inclusive. So 255 can be in there. It's just the maximum range of a byte. Um, it has a method, method to index it with the x, y, and z coordinate. Now this is the modulo, modulus operator, mod operator, and this is basically divide the left hand by the right hand and return what's left. So if x is width, normally you would get an out of range error, but it's going to divide width by width, and then whatever is remaining is zero. But if x is width plus 1, then you divide it by width and whatever is remaining is 1. So it's always going to be in bounds. So it basically it, it wraps around. That's what it does. It wraps around. And let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's not. I created a constant called levels per unit, which contains how many levels there are inside. Like if it's one height up, you have two levels of terrain. That's why it's two. And yeah, random number, random number generator. This, by the way, is the seed. The seed is just a random number that determines what sequence comes out of the random number generator. So if we put in a number here, if we don't, it's always going to be a different number that gets put in. But we want the variation to always be the same. So we put in a number. Then we create the class, which you can access through this thingy here. And that's it. In the map, we put in this. So what it does for every tile, it it divides the y. This is actually wrong. You need to do that like this. So it divides. It actually needs to multiply it. I am totally an idiot. So it multiplies the y by, by 2. So if it's 0 0.5, it becomes 1. So the, the 0 0.5, like the half, height tiles also get a different variation it implements it inputs the x and the z and then we get a random number between 0 and 255 and then we divide that by 4 and return whatever is left so we get a random number between 0 and 4 and without using a random number generator every time so it's a lot more quicker let's see if that actually runs and you might not be able to tell that it does, but it does. 
like see this tile is the same as as these two so that's the same case but these two have a different texture than this one so it works so now you have some variety in our tiles and the next thing we want to do is expand the terrain using noise and that is going to require some doing on the server um that i'm not quite sure what i'm gonna do with yeah i think we have time for this so i'm gonna do this and um, i'll bring you back once i've done a thing okay okay so i did a bunch of work off camera first off we added some stuff to the server class there's a max terrain height now which i've set to eight because uh, it's, it's actually 255 i think but i'm scaling the, the noise by the max terrain height and if it's too high because i've not optimized the client yet it just gets laggy because it has to draw too many tiles so i just set it to h for now it's fine we're gonna change that later and we have the levels per unit which is the same as on the client which is two now in the game client this is just a hack because we don't actually have a map normally the server would just have the map in a file and you could just generate a new height map if you wanted to it wouldn't generate it on the fly as it does here so what we do we have a static map heights which you know persists for everyone and then once you start sending the character data it checks if we have a map if it doesn't, it creates a Perlin noise generator. Now, a Perlin noise generator is this thing. So this is Perlin noise. You may also recognize this as the clouds filter in Photoshop, which is just Perlin noise. It makes a kind of hilly, sloped kind of pattern that's used a lot for um generating height maps so this is basically what we're making here something that makes something like this now we create a noise 2d class from lib noise which is a very useful um c sharp noise generating library you should check that out links in the description blah 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 um yeah we just tell it to have a 256 by 256 height map so this is basically the height map and then this actually sets the view of the polar noise. It's a bit technical, it's hard to explain, it's not really that relevant. What you should never do, by the way, is stuff like this 256 by 256. You, this is called a magic number. Technically, if I wasn't just hacking this code in for temporary use, I should store this somewhere in a constant like I did with these things because you keep using it and then if you want to change the 256 you have to update it everywhere in the code like here and here and here and here so that sucks so don't do that kids except if you're me then you're fine because I know what I'm doing I'm a professional a professional who can't remember what you were saying and then we just we just copy the the noise terrain heights into the array that we have here. So what that does is for every x and y coordinate we get noise value. Now the noise value is going to be minus between minus one and one. So what you do is if you have a between minus one and plus one value and you want to have a 0 to 1 value, you divide it by 2 and add a half. Then it's always going to be between 0 and 1. Although we probably want to clamp this anyway. So the clamp function just... Does this actually work? Yeah, it actually works. So it just clamps it between 0 and 1, just in case. Then the unscaled height, that is like what you would send... Um, over the network which so where every one tile up is plus one so that's times the maximum terrain height and then to get the actual height that we need we divide it by levels per unit so we divide it by two so say this gives me 0 0.5 then this becomes 0 0.5 times 8 so this is 4 and now 
what we have is here divided by two, uh, two so that becomes a tile at height two. Now if we got five here, we divide by two so we get a tile at 2.5. But all very interesting, all very fascinating I assume. Um, and then we just set the map. So let's see, um, actually I also did some, some work here, so the camera was being being a dumb. You may have noticed that if when I was moving the camera up, only the dude was going up and the terrain wasn't like being lowered to match. So I fixed that. That was that was not a thing that was supposed to be happening. Also because the map is too big now to draw all at once, we're drawing like a 64 by 64 chunk around the camera. So it's just the camera position is minus 32 plus 32 etc. So let's see if that um, if that works, shall we? And we're in the floor, but it does appear to be working. Look, look at how amazing that is. Oh my god, I am so pleased with myself. So we have some random terrain now. It's going to be actually quite big. Two hundred and fifty-six units. You just come out of, uh, out of the ground there, dear. See, when I move the camera up and down now, I'm actually floating up and down now. I'll go into the floor so you can see it better. The entire camera moves instead of just the dude, which is what we want. What we want? What we want? This is what we want. Um, let's see if I can reach the edge of the noise. This is quite a big map, actually. I didn't think 256 by 256 would be this big, but it's quite, quite large, especially moving at this pace, which I thought was a good pace, but apparently it's a little bit slow. So how are you guys doing? You doing good? How's the wife? How's the kids? And we're there. Amazing. So obviously we don't want to have to walk around the entire map. Actually, let's let's do a quick thing here. Let's just change that to five. Let's see how how we find that. Yeah, that's a bit better. That's a bit faster. Um. Okay. So the next thing. So we've done expand terrain using noise. Now we want to position a player in the middle of the terrain. Now again, because all of this is just temporary hackery, we're just going to also put that in here. So we're going to set data.location is map, and then we're just going to put it in the middle. So we need to do a vector, sorry. So I want 128, map 128, comma 128, and then 128. That's what we want. What we want. That is gonna be, please make what we want a meme, please, please, I need this to be a meme. So we're on top of the terrain, yay, in the middle of it. Now I think this is gonna be different terrain every time I reset the server, which is gonna be interesting. Let's see if that's a thing. Um, was that different? Let's try it again and now not forget what, 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 what. No, that's the same every time. What did I do? Maybe it just uses a default seed instead of a random seed every time. That is a possibility. This could be. Actually, so this is good. So we have random terrain that's always the same. That rhymes! Aren't you pleased, Punch? That's a line from Scott Pilgrim. The movie. Also the books. Okay, so now we want to add noise to add grass. I think we have time for this if I do it quickly and off screen, so let me go and do that. What we're going to do is do something similar to um, what we did with the terrain, but we're going to use a 3D cube this time, I think. Actually, no, I don't have time for this. No, this is actually more complicated than I, than I thought it would be. And we're coming up on time anyway, so let's just have a little bit of a shorter, shorter episode today. So, I mean, do we have this terrain now. I mean, I'm pretty pleased. It's actually becoming a world. I mean, it's a kind of a, a dirty, 
hilly, slopey, gently sloping world, which is a bit cubic. Not as bad as Minecraft, admittedly, but still a bit cubic. Um, but I think I think we're doing. Oh, this is one thing because I'm centering the camera on the uh, centering. Yeah, the camera. If I go up high enough, you'll see that it stops. It stops drawing. So that's. I thought that would be funny to show you. We can do it the other way around as well, and you can see the bottom moving. See? Oh, you can see how that works. Isn't that amazing? Um, yeah, that's uh, gonna be it for this episode, I think. I think we're making good progress here. Next time we're gonna add some grass. It's gonna be a similar process to what we did today, so maybe I'll just do most of that in between episodes and then just walk you through it so we can do something else as well in that episode. I don't know yet. Haven't decided. But, um, I hope you're all still enjoying this. I hope you can all follow along or at least enjoy watching this world, you know, come to be. And, um, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!